Hey, it's Ken Gagney with YouTube channel GameBits here to show you some PS4 gameplay, and that game is Rezogun, or Rezogun, or Rezogun, however you want to pronounce it. This is a free download for PlayStation Plus users. You get to play the game as long as you have an account, and you get a one-month free trial with most PlayStation 4, so that's how I got mine. Let's check out the options here. Settings, language, tutorial, camera. Uh, let's change that to standard for now. I'm going to show you later what retro is, which I actually prefer. Audio settings, I turn the controller volume all the way down because I can hear the game just fine through the TV. Controls, I did mix this up a little bit. I moved uh, some of the buttons on the shoulder and the trigger because I just found it a little bit confusing. I kept mix, uh, mixing them up. And let's see, don't need to see the credits. So let's go ahead and play this game. We're going to go online, or offline rather, with the arcade mode. I've been playing this game a little bit. And I'm going to show you not necessarily how to play it well, just how to play it. So let's go with experience. we got three ships to choose from, Nemesis, Ferox, and Phobos. And the most balanced of the three is the Ferox, so that's what I'm going to go with. And let's see, let's show my friends. Oh, I have no friends, that's right. So let's go ahead and play this game. Now this game has been described as a cross between Robotron and Defender, two classic arcade games from the golden age of arcade coin ops and I'm gonna show you why it is a defender like game in that you are human. saving this last humans actually it's also Robotron but you are flying left and right and shooting a bunch of enemies the level does loop around so you can see it's circular if you go far enough in one direction you'll end up right back where you started not quite like a Mobius strip but close and it is like Robotron in that it is a twin stick shooter so you can see that I am moving in one direction and shooting in the other. So I can move left and shoot left, move left and shoot right, and the other combinations as well. Now there's a human I need to save. I just picked him up. You can see he's hanging off my ship now. And what I need to do is get him to one of the receptacles in the sky there and just whoop, throw him. And there he is. He just got picked up by that uh, spaceship in the sky, and now he's all good and safe. Now there are several other humans I need to go save. Let me turn on my boost there. I got this guy, picked him up, and you don't necessarily need to throw him, I believe you can just fly right under the ship and they'll get picked up, like that. And all the while you are being attacked left and right. Now every now and then you'll hear the computer say, Keeper detected. Like, get that little human there. They are not referring to Quidditch, this is not uh, Harry Potter for PlayStation 4. A keeper is a string of enemies that when they appear, like these guys right here, there's a connective tissue, a glowing string between them, and you have to kill all of them, and that fires off that little energy bolt that frees one of the humans from their cage, and that allows you to go pick them up like that. If you do not destroy all the keepers, the human actually dies right in its cage. I can't give you the logic behind that, but that's the way the game works. So you need to destroy the keepers or else you lose a human. There are 10 humans, as you can identify from the little hatch marks at the top left of the screen, next to my score. Actually, I'm sorry, not next to my score, next to my number of ships that I have left. And you save them in order, and every little green, every guy you save is marked as a green figure. And every time you lose one, they're red. At the end of the level, they'll give you a tally of how many of the ten humans in that level you saved. Now you'll also notice that every time I shoot an enemy, my boost, or not my boost, I'm sorry, my multiplier goes up. It is at 3.11 right now. If I go a certain amount of time without destroying any enemies, then my multiplier resets to 1. Now I don't know if my score is actually going up by 3.3 every time I kill an enemy right now, or if it only goes up by multiples of whole numbers, like, you'll... Whoops. Oh. Oh, lost a human. The game did warn me. Whoop. It said human in danger, so I must have freed a human and not gotten to him in time to actually save him. So an alien ship picked him up, and I had a chance to destroy the alien ship that was carrying him, and take him back into my own possession, and I missed that opportunity. So you can see that there is a red mark up there for a dead human. Actually, looks like I might have missed another one because there are two that don't look like I've been, they've been saved, which is disappointing. But you know, when you're counting on me, that's what you get. 
Now every level has three phases, and that little uh, slow-mo scene right there indicates the transition from one phase to the other. So I'm in phase three right now, which means after I save two more humans, there is going to be a boss. This game does have bosses, unlike either Robotron or Defender, if I recall correctly. First, I need to save two more humans, so where are the... Actually, I think I may have already missed the opportunity to save one of them. It looks like a, it's a hollowed-out red mark there. So I one of the humans died. These look like keepers, maybe? Because they're all glowy? That is correct. I do have a couple of special weapons that I'm not using, or haven't used yet. Maybe you'll see those as the game progresses. There we go. Got that guy. Right from underneath their clutches. Just for life! Also the name of a, a game marathon for Child's Play. Anyway. So let's just uh, keep destroying enemies until the boss decides to show himself. It looks like there's a blue meter at the bottom of the screen that's filling up as I'm killing enemies. That might indicate when the level is over. Wow. I remember this is the experienced level, which is uh, the second of four settings. Only three are available out of the gate. You have to open up the fourth one, I believe. And assuming I can uh, get past the boss, I'm going to switch to the other camera mode and show you what that's like. I actually, as I previously mentioned, do prefer it. Overdrive, let me show you that basically slows everything down and gives you this giant weapon with which to shoot things. Now on my controller configuration that was R2 to use. I also have a bomb which basically just wipes out everything on the screen. I find that much easier to use because you don't have to aim it. Whoa. Okay, and now here comes the boss. I'll just hover right next to it and wait for it to assemble very patiently. Oh god, here it comes. It's a giant Taurus. And I don't mean a bull. Alright, can't shoot the uh, turrets there. That doesn't seem to do anything, so it's just a bullet hell for now. So destroy those three. Oh! Died. Bummer. So destroy those three outer ring part segments. And now I can fly inside it and destroy this little ring segment. Well, as long as I avoid the lasers. I can't fly over it. It's too tall for me to do that. And I just died again. Do I have one life left to live? I do. If I die again, it's game over. So I need to get around to the other side and now destroy these rings. Whoop. And again, without getting hit by the lasers. Lasers. It's like a... Something you find on a shark. Whoa. Okay. And now I have to shoot the core. And that'll do it. So that's how you destroy the first level boss in Rizogun. I don't know how much farther I'm going to get on just one or two lives left. I will do my best. But at the very least, that's how you play the first level. And certainly not how you get a perfect, because I only saved 7 out of 10. So I got a 70%, which is a C minus. I did not use any bombs, so I get bonuses for every bomb I didn't use. That's 15,000 points, which is pretty good. So I broke a million on the first level. Bomb is R1 in my setup, and I think that's one of the things I moved. I think I swapped bomb and overdrive so that my boost and bomb, my two Bs, are R1 and L1. Now I'm going to switch my control scheme here, not my controls, my camera, to the retro. And it's actually kind of a subtle difference. I had to switch back and forth a couple of times to note, figure out what the difference was. And the difference is that the camera does not scroll up and down. It pulls back a little bit so you can see the entire vertical playing field. And as I move up and down, the camera does not change. It's only as I move left and right. And there's my first human. Let's use a bomb. Whoop. No, I don't have any bombs. You start the level with none, I guess. Oop, that's a weapon upgrade, though. I'll take that. Jeez, still got a human on me. Gotta drop him off somewhere. Here we go. Phew. Alright. Oh! Now, these are, t these are the givers, or keepers, or takers, or whatever they're called. 
some Loris Lari book, I'm sure, or J.K. Rowling or something. All right, doing okay so far. You can see in the upper left that I have uh, three bombs, actually. Or maybe that's overdrive. I'm kind of losing track. No, it's bombs. Three bombs, no lives. That's what I got. Keeper detected, and that would be these glowy guys. So you got to shoot all them up, and then follow that spark to go find a human who's suddenly released from his cage and feeling very confused about what the heck is going on. Overdrive upgraded. Swell. I'm not quite sure what the limitation is on overdrive, how many of those I can use. Uh, let's see. I'm waiting for some keepers to show up. Oh, okay. Just had to destroy all those ground turrets and that completed the phase. You can see in the blue meter at the bottom of the screen, there's a little hatch mark just to the left of where it's currently full. That represents the entrance from phase one into phase two. So that does show you where you are in your progression through the level. <coughs> Excuse me. Keepers detected. Now I need to find the keepers. I see them right over there. And there goes the spark. And there's the human. Oh, gee, would he have fallen and died in that pit? Good thing I caught him. Now, it looks like I did already miss saving one human, human number two. You can tell from my little uh, hatch marks at the upper right there. Whoa, lots of bad guys. That's a uh, overdrive, I think. No, I was confused the two. Probably should have saved that for the boss, but whatever. Yeah, there's a little dead human in that cage there. Oops, and that's my last life. Definitely should have used a bomb. But anyway, that's how you play Rizogun. That's my new personal high score, which embarrassingly tells you all of the internet that I've never done better than you just saw me do. Yeah. So, I hope you've enjoyed this game. It is pretty fun, and it is absolutely free. If you are a new PlayStation 4 owner, this is a quick and easy way to get into the action. I'm sure you can do better than me. Go ahead and post a comment on this video with your high score, or upload your own video. It's not easy to do with the uh, HDCP that PlayStation 4 prevents you from using Elgato without an external converter box, which is what I'm doing, thanks to another video I found here on YouTube. Here's the link to it. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed this game, and it gives you a brief taste of some of the uh, free indie games that you can get on the PS4. Uh, I'm not sure this is actually indie, but, you know, it's a small downloadable game. Anyway, enjoy!